So what looks beautiful on the surface isn't necessarily so. And Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman that what I am giving you is not only looking beautiful, it is beautiful, it is pure, it is clean all the way through because it comes from God. Now listen to some of these contrasts between the two because I think that John puts these two stories together both having significant meaning. One talks about baptism and one talks about worship. Where's the proper place to worship? Here on the mountain, Gerizim, or in Jerusalem? Jesus said, don't worry about it. There's going to come a time when neither place is the place to worship God. Because God wants your worship in what? Spirit and truth. Can you do that anywhere? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nicodemus asks, what must I do to have eternal life? He says, you must be born again. And then he says, be baptized. Now, right at the beginning, we hear that Jesus' disciples have been baptizing, and there's a big controversy. John's disciples are up in arms. They're saying, Master, this guy that came later than you is now baptizing more people than you are. Shouldn't we kind of reel that thing in? John sets them straight, doesn't he? The baptism that Jesus is offering is a permanent baptism. Now here's some of the contrast that I noted. Nicodemus is well known. The Samaritan woman is anonymous. Nicodemus is scrupulously keeping the purity laws. It always says he's a good man. Good believer. The woman is permanently unclean according to her society. He is a religious leader. She's outside the religious society. Even as a Samaritan, she's outside. He was a great teacher of truth. She believes some of the Samaritan heresies. He's a high government official. She has absolutely no power. He's morally respectable. She's morally suspect. He seeks out Jesus at night and she seeks him out at noon. Neither one of those are very acceptable times. He knows that Jesus is a teacher from God. She knows that Jesus is a Jewish man. Jesus does not fully reveal himself to Nicodemus. Jesus teaches clearly that he is the Messiah to the Samaritan woman. Nicodemus does not understand the living water. The Samaritan woman asks Jesus for the living water. Nicodemus leaves lacking understanding, it says. The Samaritan woman leaves knowing who Jesus is, but also knows enough that she should not just go into town and proclaim it. Instead, she says, hey, this is what I've heard, this is what I've seen. Maybe you ought to come and check it out. Okay? Good tactic with all the men in town, right? Maybe you ought to come and check it out. Knowing full well that what they're going to find is exactly what she found. He hides his belief in the middle of the night. She goes and she tells the entire town who Jesus is. Now I think in all of those contrasts, there's a story as well. Remember, Nicodemus was about baptism. Samaritan woman is about the question of worship. But both of them are about the spirit of the living God. What brings life? How are we renewed? Where does salvation come from? And they're not saying it comes through the water. They're not saying that it comes through any other method, it comes through Jesus. He is this living water. So, what I want you to do for just a few minutes is I want you to, around your table, ask these questions. And if you're at a table of one, 
move to a table of two or three. If you're in chairs, turn to the people around you in the chairs. Here's two questions. First of all, what's the most important choices made in this chapter? Okay, and how would you analyze that? How would you lay that out for one another? So, important choices is the first one. And then, when are our noontime or nighttime moments? When is it that we are afraid to go see Jesus, but no, we must? Okay, I'm going to give you about five minutes for the whole thing. So turn to those around you. Thank you. 